Dr. Andrews leads the scientific research and development function of Sierra Sciences. His team is now pursuing direct molecular approaches to temporarily activate telomerase expression and is performing discovery efforts. While director of the molecular biology at Geron Corporation, he was one of the principal discoverers of the telomerase gene. I'm proud to introduce Dr. William H. Andrews. Thank you. I'd start off by first, like, I'd like to thank Ron Klatz and Bob Goldman for allowing me to speak here, and I'd especially like to thank uh, Janelle Topping, uh, standing back there, for putting up with all my late responses and my uh, difficult slides. Thank you. Groucho Marx once said, I intend to live forever, or die trying. He, he was trying to be funny when he said this, and he got a lot of laughs. But I don't believe the people in this room think this is very funny, because we're here because we're all trying to live forever. I know I am. And we are going to try our best to do that. And so what I'm going to be talking today isn't really how to live forever. I'm going to be talking about how to try to live forever. I'm going to be talking about research science that's underway now that's going to allow us or increases our chances of succeeding at this. And so pretty much what I'm going to be talking about today is not what you can buy today. In some cases that's not true. But I'm going to be talking about what's in the future, what we have in the future to look forward to. So to, how, how to try to live forever, first do the obvious things. Eat healthy, live healthy, exercise, listen to everything your doctor says. But this isn't enough. This isn't going to allow us to do things like run seven-minute miles when we're 130 years old. And that's what we want to do. And by the way, we're not just talking about living longer. We're talking about living healthy longer. We want to be very healthy when we're in our hundreds. Now, there's been a lot of things that have allowed us to extend our lifespan tremendously, especially just in the last 100 years. In 1900, the average lifespan was uh, only 47.3 years. And since then, we've extended that up to 78 years through a lot of things, including better sewage systems, vaccines, refrigeration, exercise. The other column has coronary artery bypass surgery, chemotherapy. All these things add up to give us a tremendous extension of life. But none of these things are going to cure aging. We still aren't going to see anybody, or we aren't going to be running seven-minute miles when we're 130 years old. And this is because there's a theoretical maximum lifespan that a lot of scientists have calculated to be 125 years. Apparently, nobody can live beyond 125 years. There's been at least three studies done. References are here. The most recent one was just a few months ago, a mathematical model looking at how much older people have been getting over the last 100 years. And still, they see this threshold. We can't seem to pass this threshold of 125 years. And they don't know why. Well, there's a lot of theories on what causes aging. And because of time, I don't want to go through all these. But I want you to see how many there are. And they're probably all true. We probably all have a lot of things in our, cell, in our bodies causing us to age. I, I tend to believe in every one of them because I'm very eager to live forever. And so I try to do everything I can to try to combat all these different uh, uh, theories. But I like to think of each theory as a stick of dynamite that's burning inside of our cells. And so when that fuse goes out, that's when we die of old age. But there's multiple sticks of dynamite. There's a lot of things inside of us that are causing aging. And we don't really know what the one with the shortest fuse is. And that's really the only one that matters. Which stick of dynamite has the shortest fuse? So there's a lot of people working on a lot of different ideas on what might be the shortest fuse. Not all the researchers agree on what that might be. They include stem cells, mitochondria, maintenance, uh, nanomedicine, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I personally am very interested in this list. I'm trying to keep a real accurate record of everything that's going on and trying to keep on top of it all. And so if anybody looking through this list sees anything that I've left out, please let me know. I'd like to add it to the list. OK, but today, I personally believe that our shortest fuse is the length of our telomeres. And so I'm going to be talking about the control of telomere length. All right. 
what's this guy talking about? Uh, most of you have probably never heard of a telomere, and so I'm going to give you a basic background on what this is first. And to do this, I need to zoom in on a person. And when we zoom in on a person, we see that a person is made up of 100 trillion cells. And if you, all those theories I was talking about before on why we age, they all relate to the aging of our cells. We age because our cells age. If we could find a way to prevent aging in our cells, that would probably be, cure our own aging. If we zoom in any, even further, we see that every cell contains a nucleus. And inside these nuclei, there are chromosomes. And these chromosomes are where all the genes exist that give us our blue eyes, our blonde hair, make some of us short, and make some of us smart. And so uh, I want to zoom in even further now and explain that a chromosome is made up of a DNA strand that extends from one end all the way to the other. And the DNA is approximately 10 million bases long. It's made up of units called bases, and it's pretty much coiled up like a slinky all the way through this chromosome. The key of my talk today is the very tips of the chromosomes. These are what are called the telomeres. And if we unravel this slinky in the telomere, we can see that a telomere is about 15,000 bases long. At least it is when you're uh, first conceived. As soon as cells start dividing, your telomeres start getting shorter. And by the time you are having enough cell division to become a newborn baby, telomeres have shortened already down to uh, 10,000 bases. They've gone from 15,000 bases to 10,000 bases. As, we, as cells start to divide further for us to become adults, our telomeres shorten even further. And when we, they get as short as 5,000 bases, we die of old age. Telomeres cannot get shorter than 5,000 bases. Inside of petri dishes, when we grow cells in petri dishes, the cells absolutely stop growing and die of old age at 5,000 bases. Let me repeat this. We are born at 15,000 bases. We are, are, are conceived at 15,000 bases. We're born at 10,000 bases. We die of old age at 5,000 bases. And there's absolutely nothing we can do about this. This telomere shortening is going to occur no matter how well you exercise, no matter how, much, how well you eat, no matter how much you do, everything your doctor tells you to do, you cannot stop this telomere shortening. Now, this is the only clock of aging that anybody has ever discovered in humans. And it actually fairly explains, fairly well explains, this 125-year theoretical, theoretical maximum that we have, because we, these telomeres shorten on approximately 1,000 bases per year. So this is a new word. A lot of you now know what this word means. But I predict that in the next five to 10 years, this is going to become a household word. Everybody's going to want to know how long their telomeres are. I recommend that everybody here get their telomeres measured as soon as possible. And I recommend every doctor get all their patients' telomeres measured, as the length of their telomeres measured as soon as possible. Because I believe this is going to be the biggest and best biomarker of aging and overall health that we've ever seen. And we want to get our baseline telomere lengths measured now. So the best best example of where telomeres play a role in aging is the fact that there are some people who are born with already short telomeres. This disease called progeria affects these kids, and this disease is called the disease of short telomeres. These kids have a maximum life expectancy of about 20 years, and they suffer from all the same age-related ailments that normal old people do. If we could find a way to stop telomere shortening or to slow it down, this could be a cure for this disease. That's pretty much going to be what I'm going to be talking about today, is finding ways to stop this telomere shortening. Now, these kids aren't the only ones that suffer from telomere shortening. We all do. Telomere shortening has been implicated in almost all aspects of normal aging. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to just give a few examples and I'll start off with the number one and two causes of death, cancer. When our telomeres get short, our, our chromosomes become unstable. And the rearrangements of our chromosomes cause mutations. And these can induce uh, the expression of oncogenes and, and derepressed tumor suppressor genes. 
increasing our risk of getting cancer. In addition, when the telomeres in our immune cells get short, our immune cells lose the ability to fight the cancers. So it's two things happen here. Short telomeres increase our risk of getting cancer and, increase, and decrease our ability to fight the cancer. Atherosclerosis. Uh, when you look at the cells lining your blood vessels, the endothelial cells and the smooth muscle cells, you'll find that if you look at the telomeres in the cells surrounding plaque, you'll find those telomeres are shorter than the telomeres in other parts of the blood vessels. And this is because we think that the, tel the cells have gotten older through telomere shortening, and as a result, they are less capable of preventing plaque. So if we could find a, a way to prevent that telomere shortening, this could be a possible way of preventing plaque and even fighting plaque. I'm gonna, there's a lot of disease, lack of time. I'm not going to go into all of them, but people are welcome to talk to me throughout this conference. I can tell you the basics of telomere biology in all of these, but they include Alzheimer's, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, just general skin aging. Uh, they include macular degeneration, which right there, which is the number one cause of blindness in the elderly, uh, liver cirrhosis, muscular dystrophy, AIDS. Now, you all remember back in the early 80s when uh, AIDS epidemic first uh, came around, doctors were saying that they don't understand why their patients don't have any T cells. But we now know that the immune cells, the T cells in the immune system, put up such a fight against the AIDS virus, and it, the fight was unsuccessful, but because of this fight, there was lots of cell division, and the telomeres got very short in these immune cells, and the immune system died of old age. And that's why the AIDS patients don't have uh, T cells. Now, if we could find a way to prevent the telomere shortening in these immune cells, the immune cells would stay around. They probably wouldn't be successful at fighting the disease, but the person might be able to live a normal life. General immunity, uh, stem cells. Every time I go to a stem cell conference, doctors are asking me, have we come up with a drug to prevent telomere shortening yet? And I always have to say, not yet. But the reason why they're asking is because when you take stem cells out of a person, you have to expand them in culture. You have to get more numbers of them. You have to let them divide. Well, because of the cell division, the telomeres are getting shorter. And so the cells that they put back into a person end up actually being older than the cells they took out of a person. So, the, so the people doing stem cells need a drug that will prevent telomere shortening when they're doing stem cell therapy. There's a lot of diseases. Anything you can think about that covers, that involves cell division is going to have telomere shortening. And one thing I want to leave you with is that bad things happen when telomeres get short. There's nothing good about short telomeres. And there's also nothing bad about long telomeres. So it would be good if we could find a way to keep the tips of our chromosomes long. So now let me address the question of why do telomeres shorten? And to do this, I have to explain when I was showing you the cell and it had the chromosome in it, chromosomes in it, when that cell divides, all the chromosomes, the two new cells that get made out of this have to have all the same chromosomes that the original cell had. So the DNA has to duplicate. It has to replicate. Now, DNA replication is a lot like laying bricks on a brick wall. The bottom strand here can be considered the original strand, and then the new strand, the top layer is the new strand, and this has to be identical to the original strand. Remember, this DNA is about 100 uh, million bases long, so it's a long, arduous process. And if there's any mutations that are made during this thing, or any mistakes, this can lead to mutations that can cause cancer, et cetera. So this is a pretty, pretty accurate procedure. But what we want to do is we want to look what's happening over at the very tips of the chromosome, okay, the telomeres. And so we have this brick layer, which, by the way, in a cell is called DNA polymerase 1, is moving along replicating, and you're going to see there's a, a problem coming up here. And this is what actually happens inside of a cell. The, cell. the cell is unable to replicate the very end of the chromosome. As a result, every time uh, DNA or chromosomes are replicated, they are a little bit shorter. And as I said before, there's nothing we can do about this. But I want to point out that there was no degradation here. There was no enzymes that came along and chewed this away. This is purely due to a lack of an ability for the cell to replicate the very ends of the chromosome. It's more of a passive, not an active, phenomenon. But now this, this DNA has to divide, or the cell has to divide. The chromosome needs to replicate again. The new chromosome is even shorter. 
and again and again. And there's absolutely nothing we can do about this. No matter how well you eat, no matter how much you exercise, no matter how much you do, everything your doctor tells you to do, you cannot stop this telomere shortening. I said you can't stop it, but there are things you can do to accelerate this telomere shortening. And this, is, this has to do with anything leading, related to an unhealthy lifestyle. And that includes things like obesity, lack of exercise, psychological uh, distress, and smoking. Things like those will create free radicals inside your cells that will come along and the free radicals will clip your telomeres and make them shorter. Now this kind of stuff you can control. The, um, uh, you've probably read, seen press releases lately where people are saying that uh, simple meditation can help uh, uh, reduce telomere shortening. Well, this is why. It's, not, it's reducing the accelerated telomere shortening, but there's absolutely nothing that will work to actually reduce this basal level of telomere shortening here that, that I described first. So, how are we going to stop this? I've been saying that there's nothing you can do about this, but that's all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out a way to do this. And I've learned from a lesson from our reproductive cells. Our reproductive cells do not age. And this is important because if they did age, our children would be born as old as we are. But they don't age, and that's why our children are born young. So something inside our reproductive cells prevents them from, being age from aging. And so this was a key to try to find out how to make our other cells not age. Well, as it turns out, our reproductive cells do not have telomere shortening. And this is probably why they don't age. And, and this is because, this, we discovered this about 15 years ago, our reproductive cells contain an enzyme called telomerase. And this is a picture of a cartoon of telomerase. The green is the DNA, show, showing the very telomere, tip of the DNA. And the factory looking thing is the telomerase enzyme. And what it's doing there is it's lengthening the telomere. Now, so here's, let's go back to this original model here of the bricklayer uh, as an analogy for DNA replication. This bricklayer is still going to fall off in a reproductive cell. But like an angel, telomerase comes in and replaces that brick or fills in the missing DNA strand. So as a result, our telomeres don't get shorter. And if you think about it, this can't be, you, you, it can't be getting shorter because you came from cells from your parents, they came from cells from their grandparents, your grandparents, et cetera, et cetera. Your children are going to come from cells from you. And if we had telomere shortening all the way through here, you would never, ever be alive right now because you wouldn't have any DNA left. There'd be so much telomere shortening. And the key is that this has been going on for the last 3.7 to 4.5 billion years when the first cell was first created. Ever since then, cells have been dividing and dividing and dividing. We are all progeny of that very first cell. This picture is getting a little unwieldy, so I'm going to just show one lineage of these cells. But after about three billion years of cell division, cells suddenly started to divide to start forming multicellular organisms, such as humans. And the green cells in this slide are called the germline cells, or our reproductive cells. They have been dividing forever. The somatic cells, the orange cells, are the cells that are formed from these germline cells that actually make the human. And the key is, is that the green cells don't have any aging process, but the orange cells do. So how do we make it so that the orange cells don't age like the green cells don't age? So our simple strategy in my labs is to take into account that first, somatic cells don't produce telomerase. That's the problem. But they do contain the gene for telomerase. So which means they have the ability to produce telomerase, they just don't. And they don't because the gene is shut off. And so our simple strategy, obviously, is let's figure out a way to turn it back on again. So inside the reproductive cell, telomerase is produced by the telomerase gene. And next to every gene, there's a regulatory element that's like a light switch that turns the gene on or off. In this case, in the reproductive cells, the gene is turned on. So in all of our other cells, a repressor comes along and binds to that regulatory element and shuts the gene off. And that's called a repressor. So what we want to do in my labs is we want to find a drug that will bind to that repressor, remove that repressor from the 
uh, regulatory element and allow telomerase to turn back on. If you decide you don't want telomerase to turn, stay on forever, you can take, quit taking the drug and the repressor will go back and shut it off again. So that drug would be considered an anti-aging drug. This is the team working in my labs, where there's about 30 scientists. Uh, we, ha we have a 10,000 square foot research facility in Reno, Nevada. We've been in operation now for 10 years. Uh, and we have two million dollar robots that are spending all their time just screening uh, drugs after drugs after drugs. And you can see like a robotic arm right there that will carry like 96 different drugs at a time, carry from station to station, and, and, and analyze, have equipment on this robot that will analyze the weather, see whether telomerase turned on. The key is, I want everybody to realize, there's a very significant effort going on here to try to cure aging. And I have to admit, one of the main reasons this is going on is because I want to cure my aging. And I'm very, very motivated by that. So we've been in operation for 10 years, and as of just a week ago, we have found, we have screened 141,756 chemicals, and we have now found 32 hits. That is, we have found 32 of these green things that dislodge this repressor. That is 32 different chemicals that turn on the telomerase gene. So we're pretty excited. Uh, right now, these, these drugs are not ready for human use, but we have to first enter, if it, we've been in what's called the drug discovery phase. Now we're just entering the drug development phase. This is where we take these 32 different drugs we look at their structures, we figure out what's good, what's bad, we design new drugs that are more potent, less toxic, and then when we have something that's safe for human use, we can put it, we can enter this into clinical trials, and then after clinical trials, this should be available for public use in probably 10, five to 20 years from now, depending on funding. But this could be the biggest thing that ever hit the planet. Telomerase induction, uh, might just actually change the way all of us live if, we, if, we, if it works the way we think it's going to work. Now, I gotta, this is probably where I should end my talk because this is where we're at right now. But I want to say that we don't know the answer to this question yet. Will telomerase induction cure aging? It's all a theory right now. It's all a hypothesis. And uh, so, so we don't know the answer to this. But I want to say that there is a light at the end of this tunnel here. There is a lot of reason for a lot of hope. And that's because of proof of concept experiments that we have done over the years. Now, ideally, as I've been saying, we'd like to find a, a drug that would turn on the telomerase gene by, by just dislodging that repressor, but that drug doesn't exist yet. And so what we've done in the past is we've introduced the telomerase gene through a process that we call telomerizing. We take the gene, we insert it into the chromosome by carrying it on a virus, and then we do it in such a way that it's not regulated, and so that, that gene is producing telomerase. And so we've done that, and first let me say that when you take a normal cell, a normal skin cell, and grow it in culture, and the x-axis here is the number of days in culture, and the y-axis is the number of cell divisions, you find that after a time the cells start slowing down and level off. This is called cell senescence, and that leveling off place is called the Hayflick limit. This has been true for all cells ever. But for the first time ever, when we telomerized human skin cells uh, in 1997, we found that they did not level off. They kept on growing. Nobody had ever seen this before. These cells were the healthiest cells in the world, and they also had a tremendously decreased risk of getting mutations, including cancer. So we published this in 1998, made headline news all over the world, and it really opened the door for a lot more research on telomerase. But one big surprise in this study is that the telomeres didn't just stop shortening, as we expected. They actually got longer. So now this begged the question, did we actually make the cells younger? And this was not really our goal at the time, but let's take it. Okay, so I, I was working at Geron Corporation at the time, and I left about that time to start my present company, but Walter Funk, who was working with me beforehand, did the following experiment. He took skin cells from a human and grew them onto the back of a mouse. 
Uh, and then when he looked at young cells, he found the skin looked young. When he did old cells, he found the skin looked old. But when he telomerized the old cells, he found that those old skin cells now produced young skin. So the cells had become young. Well, that's nothing new. There's, there's lots of things in this expo that can make skin look young. So Walter took this one step further, and he did what's called DNA array analysis. It's a way of looking at all the different genes inside of a cell at once. So when he, this is a computer chip, each little square is a, represents a different gene, and the color of each square represents the amount of expression of that gene. So when he took young skin, young cells, and grew it in the skin, he could see that it had a young expression pattern. When he took old cells, he saw a tremendously different expression pattern because some genes were expressed at lower levels, some were expressed at higher. But when he looked at the telomerized cells, he found they essentially looked almost completely like young skin. So not only did he make the skin look young, but he actually made it younger by every method of measurement we know of. Okay, so I've talked about two proofs of concepts. One is cells growing in a petri dish. One is tissue growing on skin on the back of a mouse. Let's go one step further and talk about a whole organism. And this is, three different labs have done this, and the references are on the bottom uh, right side. These mice here are the same age. The difference is they've been engineered so that one produces telomerase and one doesn't. And as a result, one has short telomeres and the other one has long telomeres. This top mouse, if you look carefully, is losing its hair, it's got male pattern baldness, and it's suffering from a lot of the age-related ailments that humans do, including weakened immune system, intestinal atrophy, reduced spleen size, uh, decreased wound healing, and decreased lifespan. The mouse on the bottom lives 50% longer than the mouse on the top. So this is a proof of principle in organism. Now, the most exciting proof of concept is very recent data. This is proof of concept actually in humans. There actually is a commercially available nutraceutical that people can buy now for use in humans. And the company that's making this nutraceutical has provided us with some of it to do research on. And we have added it to cells, and we have found that it, in fact, induces telomerase expression. Not very much, but little is better than nothing. The, the little, the, even a little bit will, will at least decrease the weight of shortening. But now, it might even be working better than we thought. In collaboration with another lab, we took blood samples from people that are uh, uh, actually taking this nutraceutical now and looked at their telomeres. And even though we couldn't see the average telomere increasing, we could see that the shortest telomeres were increasing, which is telling us that this nutraceutical is inducing telomerase, and this telomerase is having an effect on the telomeres. When people that had been on the nutraceutical for more than a year were looked at, there were several different things that were seen. Some of, the, uh, some of these biomarkers a lot of you are familiar with, but CD28 minus T cells is one of the best biomarkers of aging. Uh, and they tend to increase when you get older. But the people taking t uh, this nutraceutical saw their T cells, CD28 negative T cells decrease. They also saw naive T cells increase, natural killer cells decrease, blood pressure decrease, skin elasticity increase. This is really exciting. This is a real proof of concept that telomerase induction is something that can really be used to potentially cure aging. Now, we still don't know the question, will telomerase induction cure aging? And that's because this new nutraceutical hasn't been around long enough to really answer the question. But things are looking good, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens. We also still don't know the answer to how long we will live if we induce telomerase. Remember, there's no way to answer this stuff until we actually have a drug that we can show works. And then we can start asking the question, how long will people live? But I predict that people will definitely live beyond the 125-year theoretical maximum. And whether it's going to be 200, 300 years, we have no idea. We'll just have to wait and see. But will there be other things that we need to do to extend lifespan? Again, we don't know, but I, I guess it's pretty likely that, that telomere shortening isn't the only thing that causes aging. Unfortunately, there's all these other things that I mentioned before that are being done. So if telomere shortening is our shortest fuse on these dynamites and we get that fuse put out, 
There's still going to be the other fuses coming, and hopefully other people are working on these. And I'm glad to say that these are well covered. There's people championing all these efforts, uh, labs all over the country working on these. What's the biggest obstacle here? The reason why, I mean, science is very straightforward. It, it seems like scientists really have a really good handle on how to cure aging right now. The, the science is straightforward. It's the funding that's not straightforward. All these researchers, research labs depend on funding. Now, if you think about it, look at all the work that we're doing to send a man, put a man on Mars, uh, find life on other planets, uh, 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 recreate the Big Bang and dissect the atom. The government's spending billions and billions of dollars on these things. You would think if somebody had a great idea on how to cure aging, the government would be spending just as equally as much money on them too. That's not the case. I believe that the government actually thinks that curing aging is not good for the human race in general. It's good for you and me, but it's not going to be good for the human race in general. I personally believe that we make the human race what we want it to be, and so let's push aging research. But right now, the funding comes from nonprofit foundations, such as the Maximum Life Foundation, one that I like because it focuses on all the different aging. It's not focused on just one. But there are a lot of other uh, nonprofit foundations, too. And, and there's also a lot of private individuals that have a lot of money that are interested in extending their own lifespan because they can't take it with them and they want to be around longer to spend their money. So a lot of these type of people are investing into these companies too. So in conclusion, I'd like to say that uh, Groucho Marx may not have been joking. Maybe he really did want to try to live forever. I know that I do. And I know that my company is very motivated to doing this. Our logo is Cure Aging or Die Trying. And that if you want to learn more about telomerase induction, go to www.cureagingordietrying.com. So that should be easy to remember. You can do it with, it, with dashes or without. I will also be around uh, to answer questions. I will also be at booth 139 to answer questions because usually a lot of people have a lot of questions about this. It's a brand new technology and something we can look forward to in the future. And thank you very much.